Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Gardner, double board certified plastic surgeon serving the New Jersey, New York area. And today we're going to talk a little bit about heart attack. So check out this video and learn more about uh, symptoms and signs of a heart attack. If you have recently been treated for a heart attack, a condition caused by a blockage of blood flow to your heart muscle. So heart attack is or called a myocardial infarction is basically when your heart muscle dies due to a blockage of the coronary arteries, which are the arteries that supply the heart with nutrients, blood, and oxygen. This video will help you understand the condition and its treatment. Your heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood containing the oxygen and nutrients your body needs. The main pumping chamber of your heart is the left ventricle. So you have four chambers in the heart. There's two on the top, two on the bottom. Basically the two on the bottom pump blood vigorously to the rest of the body. The left ventricle is larger and pumps to the body. The right ventricle mostly pumps the blood to the lungs. When your left ventricle ventricle contracts, it sends oxygen-rich blood to your body through a large artery called the aorta. Connected to your aorta are small arteries called coronary arteries. The oxygen comes from the lungs into the heart where it ends up in the left ventricle, then this oxygen-rich blood goes out the aorta, and right at the base of the aorta, you have these coronary arteries where blood, oxygen-rich blood flows from there into the outside and nerve of the heart muscle and has a uh, capillary system which nourishes all the muscles of the heart. So when you get a blockage in one of these coronary arteries, that's where the heart muscle doesn't get enough oxygen. And unfortunately, if your muscle doesn't get enough oxygen, it starts dying and that's how a heart attack happens. Blood flows from your aorta through the coronary arteries to supply your heart muscle with oxygen and nutrients. During your heart attack, blood flow through one of your coronary arteries. So this is kind of interesting here, this schematic here. As you can see here, the blood flow is narrowed by this yellow tissue here. What that yellow tissue is is known as a plaque, which usually is high in fatty fat or cholesterol. Yeah, it's, well, it's known to be that that happens by eating a lot of fatty foods or processed foods, which are high in fat content. And so what happens is this yellow gets very, uh, fibrin gets in there. It's also composed of calcium, fibrin, and some cellular waste material. And so all that kind of gets hard like a rock. And it gets, basically gets thicker and thicker narrowing the coronary bypass and the coronary uh, arteries and causing a blockage, potential blockage in the area. May have been severely reduced or completely blocked. Your reduced blood flow may have been caused by a buildup of a fatty substance called plaque in your coronary arteries. These plaques usually have a lot of calcium in them. And so uh, sometimes uh, you can get a test, a uh, high speed uh, CAT scan, which takes fine uh, cuts of the heart, and they can do what's called a calcium score. They rate you on a one to 100 to see how much calcium is in your coronaries. Obviously a high number is not very good, a low number is better. If this plaque became disrupted, a blood clot might- Now these plaques do take years to develop. This isn't something that happens from eating one cheeseburger. But this happens from kind of decades believed of eating fat saturated foods or processed foods and also a lack of exercise as well. And obesity, there's a few other medical things that can uh, contribute to that, diabetes, obesity, and lack of exercise are huge. Form and severely worsen the narrowing or lead to a sudden complete blockage stopping blood flow down the- So when this happens, when a blood clot happens there, some doctors may inject fibrinolytic medication, which is gonna basically dissolve that clot, bust it up, and allow blood flow to go through. A blockage in your coronary arteries prevented the oxygen and nutrients in your blood from reaching the part of your heart supplied by the artery. As a result, heart muscle in that area started to die. Damage to part of your heart muscle is called a heart attack. It's also known as a myocardial infarction, or MI. Your heart doctor may have recommended a procedure to help open the blockage and improve blood flow to the damaged area. The procedure you had may have been a coronary angioplasty. 
During a coronary angioplasty, a balloon-tipped catheter inflates inside your blocked coronary artery to open it. So usually when this happens, the heart attack, this is an emergency. You want to go to the hospital as quickly as possible. And most hospitals have what they call a STEMI team. STEMI stands for ST elevation myocardial infarction. Basically, the ST is uh, these, this section of the EKG, which raises, which doctors who are able to read that can tell that you're having a heart attack. And so basically it's believed that if you can get the patient into the catheter lab to put one of these balloons or stents in, has to be within 90 minutes. So a lot of these cardiologists who are on call, they have to be available so they can drive the hospital 90 minutes or less to basically either open up that artery again to bring new oxygenated blood to those uh, cells that uh, aren't getting it. That's in 90 minutes. And um, usually permanent damage can happen in less than 30 minutes. That's why it's critical to get to the emergency room as quickly as possible. The procedure may have involved placing a stent to help prop the artery open. This is usually a thin metal mesh that acts as a scaffold. And some of these stents now have um, fibrinolytic drugs that kind of ooze into the system to prevent clots from rehappening in the area. Or you may have had a coronary artery bypass graft, or cabbage. Cabbage is a surgical procedure in which the blocked areas of the coronary arteries are bypassed with veins or other arteries from the body. So many times, traditionally, they were taking leg veins out, reversing them, because leg veins have valves. You reverse them to allow the blood to flow through so the valves don't block them. And they would suture them into the aorta like, aorta, like this shows, and then beyond the blockage. But now they can do minimally invasive surgery where they take the large arteries just underneath the uh, rib cage and put that in as well. So they don't necessarily have to cut your whole chest open. So it's gone to more minimally invasive procedures as time has gone on. Before you left the hospital, your healthcare provider most likely prescribed several medications. Your medication may include the following. Oral antiplatelet therapy helps prevent platelets from sticking together and forming new blood clots. You may have also received drugs called beta blockers that help lower your heart rate and blood pressure. Drugs such as angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs, and calcium channel blockers also work to lower your blood pressure if needed. And you may have been prescribed statins along with a low-fat diet to lower your cholesterol. These drugs work by reducing the amount of cholesterol made in your liver. So all those drugs are very important for aftercare. Also, at the time of a heart attack, if you're having a heart attack, taking an aspirin can also be very helpful or nitroglycerin tablets if you have them available. Nitroglycerin dilates blood vessels and aspirin is like antiplatelet kind of therapy which helps prevent the clots from becoming more worse. It is important to stay on your medications as your physician prescribed, even if you are feeling better. Do not go off your medication unless the healthcare professional that prescribed them tells you to. Right, so all medications have side effects and nobody likes taking medications, but that's so true. A lot of times what happens is people feel better afterwards and then they feel like they don't need them anymore and then they don't take them for a while. And then, you know, they start eating fatty foods again because they're feeling good and then they get their second heart attack. So it's uh, always best, even if you're feeling good, to stay on these medications. I hope this uh, learns more about your heart attack. And once again, this is just for educational purposes. If you do have any heart problems, I recommend highly that you uh, make a call to a cardiologist. If you like these type of videos, hit the subscribe and like button and there'll be more on the way.